part two of the Ready, Set, Go. We're going to look at Nancy's approach to the problem. It's the same problem that we had back here, where we have this growing T shape. Now what Nancy does on problem number 12 is she looks at the base. And let's take a look at the base here. So she looks at the base being only the bottom ones. She says, okay, there's one. And then there's three. And then there's five. And so just for the base, it's growing by two every time, plus two. Then she looks at the tower as, well, there's nothing here. It's missing. So it starts at zero. And then one. And then two. And then three and four and so on. So each of them is growing in a different way. Let's look at her table. <coughs> so she starts with one, and we'll just do the base first. And then how do we get three? Well, because then you add two on that step, and then you add no, wait, that's not right. Um, yeah, first you add one, then you add two, so that's three. And then how do you get five? You do one and two and two again, and then seven. You do one and two and two again and two again, and then nine. One and two again and two again and two again. So look at how many twos there are. I missed a two. And two again. How many twos there are? There are four twos. But compare that to the step number. Because remember, that's the one we're going to call S. That's the one we're going to generalize with. So this part of the formula would just be 1 plus. Now notice how that the step number, if you take away 1 from it, it tells you how many twos you're going to have. So on step five, there are four twos. On step four, there are three twos. On step three, there are two twos. Step two, one two. Step one, no twos. So you take how many twos is step number minus one. Now, let's look at the tower. The tower starts with nothing, then one, then two, then three, then four. How does that compare to the step number? Well, look at it again. It's five becomes four, four becomes three, three becomes two, two becomes one, one is nothing. So that's exactly the same thing, except it's not counting the number of twos. It is the number. So we're going to put another S minus one. This is what's equal to the total. Now I have some more information for you in the next paragraph. This is called function notation. It says instead of using x and y in an equation like y equals 5x plus 1, mathematicians often write f of n equals 5n plus 1 because it can give more information. With this notation, the direction to find f of 2 means to replace the value of n with 2 and perform the operations to find f of n. The point n f of n is in the same location on the graph as x, y, where n describes the location along the x-axis and f of n is the height of the graph. So to see if we understand that, we're going to evaluate two different functions. One is called f and one is called g. f of n has the rule 8n minus 3 and g of n has the rule 3n minus 10. So problem number 13, f of 1. That means to take the rule 8n minus 1 and replace the n with a 1. Evaluate using PEMDAS, that's 8 minus 3, the answer is 5. So that means that if x is 1, 
y is 5. Or, in a different way to say it, f of 1 is 5. But here's the definitive answer. Now let's look at g. g has the function rule 3 times a number minus 10, but the number is 0. So we're going to substitute 0 in here. 3 times 0 minus 10 is minus 10. That would represent the point 0 minus 10. f of 5, back to the f function, 8 times something minus 3, and that something is 5. 8 times 5 minus 3, 40 minus 3, or 37, and that would be the point 537. And lastly, g of negative 4. And the g rule again is 3n minus 10. 3 times something minus 10, the something is negative 4. That's negative 22 minus 10. Oh, sorry, that's the answer. Negative 12 minus 10, or negative 22. And there's our answer. Now we're on to the Go part. The Go helps us with our next lesson. This is a review of exponents. So if we want to write 7 multiplied times itself, 4 times, that's written as 7 to the 4th power. The 4 is up in the air. If the 7 is on the ground, the 4 is up in the air. Number 18, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 threes. We say that's 3 to the 6th power. On number 19, if you have a fraction, just make sure you put the fraction in parentheses because we want the 1 and the 5 to get the power, and the power is 2 because it's repeated twice. In our next set, we're going to go backwards. Okay, We're going to take the expression and expand it. This is 7 to the first power. That just means 7. The value of that is just 7. 21 is 5 to the fourth power. It means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. The value of the expression is the number 625. You can get that by just multiplying that all out. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. 125 times 5 is 625. Or learn how to put this into your calculator. And the last one, 22. <coughs> the expanded form is 7 times 2. And how many 2s? 3 2s. Because the exponent is 3. Again, how do we get the value? We multiply it out, or we put it in the calculator, the value will be 56. Now, a few more, just to connect what we did earlier in the week about evaluation. When you see x equals a number, and you have an expression, you can substitute that number in place of the letter. So instead of saying 2 to the x, we can say 2 to the 9th. And that is 512. Multiplying by 2, 9 times is one way to get the answer. Putting in your calculator is another way to get the answer. 6n squared, that would be 6 times 3 to the second power. 3 to the second power is 3 times 3, it's 9, so 6 times 9, and 6 times 9 is 54. And lastly, let's put 5 in for s, 4 times 5 to the third power, 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5, that's 125, 4 125s, is 
500. Okay, that's it for the Ready, Set, Go. Next time, lesson three.